Welcome to the Automators Podcast with your host, Jackie Stook and Joe Glines. Hey, everybody. So today we're going to cover nine times to say no to clients. No. Hey, everybody. It's Jackie from Copenhagen. <laughs> and Joe from Dallas. <laughs> Great. So today we're going to cover these nine times you should say no to a client. And yeah, it's it, I, I find these to be great because none of these are wrong in any way because you really do need to practice saying no to clients. And I'd say one of those that really has a, the nail on the head is if the client is in too big of a hurry, right? If if the oh i just need it now go 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 I'll, I'll i'll pay you later or whatever it might be um if if they are in such a hurry that they can't explain if they don't want to use time on making sure that everything is in place before you start you can start coding on whatever uh, it might be and find out because they were in such a big hurry that you used your time on in the totally wrong direction. Don't do it if they're in too big of a hurry. Yeah, you end up wasting everyone's time, right? Yours, the clients often, especially, you know, if they're not paying you by the hour, it really sucks, right? If you're paying, if they're paying by the hour, they're wasting their time and money, but of course, then they're going to have a negative feeling about the whole thing anyway. So you're just better off not not doing working with them or or also that there could be something wrong with what they're doing um and, and maybe they don't plan to pay you or anyway that's just it's a good thing to avoid um the other really big one is, is especially early on always have some sort of a contract something get them to sign something and uh if they're not willing to do that that's a big red herring of like you know what maybe maybe these guys i you know if they're not willing to do that something's wrong yeah yeah if if they if they ain't willing to document your agreement in some way, yeah, that that's a big red flag. That's absolutely sure. Um, I, I'd say um, the next one also unreal expectations, right? Uh, this idea they have will solve all of their problems, right? It, and often it doesn't go that way, and uh, you know. <laughs> If things doesn't really grow into the sky right if their expectations can be framed correctly if they accept the uh, the, the, <laughs> the things they can expect right if they come with unreal expectations and you try and help them into getting expectations that can actually happen and they do not want to accept that yeah, that's a that's that's not good. No, because because again, the thing is, you you want to be happy, and you want the client to be happy, right? And and if at the end, after you produce what you want, and then they're like, "Well, hey, this, you know, it used to take us uh, forty hours, and it still takes us four hours, but it's automated. It should have taken you know thirty seconds." You're like that, it, you know. I told you up front. That's just not. With the budget you have, we you know we can't do that. Make sure you're very clear up front about setting exactly what they should expect. You know, just getting that, getting them on board early. Otherwise, later, and then because the last thing you want is someone out there bad mouthing you, right? When you told them up front, that's not you know really a real expectation to have. Uh, and this next one ties in with that is Jackie and I know firsthand from this one. I know where someone says they want X. And then especially when they're not paying by the hour, but they keep changing everything on you and, and the things that you want to do are out of scope. And then nothing ever actually even gets done because they keep flip-flopping on the goals and what they want. And it's just, generally speaking, a bad experience. You don't come up with nice, clean code or tools because how can you design something well when everything keeps changing, right? And it's hard to lay anything out. So making sure you have a very clear picture of what it is. If they come up with other things, suggest let's finish what we're doing and let's actually get paid on that thing. And then we'll make those other changes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that It's a great one. If you can actually nail down that this is the thing we're working on now, 
Yeah, sure enough, it would be nice if it did that as well. Let's just note that down over here and let's get the other thing working or finished or whatever we'd want to call it, right? It, it's it's really a great one to actually have a specific goal you can work towards where they don't just keep filling stuff in the bucket, right? Um, the, the next one we also have here, the fifth one is they won't pay, let's say, 20% upfront, right? It's not because they need to pay you an uh, uh, ungodly amount or 50% or whatever, but at least show some inclination of willingness to pay. Yeah, and, and ability, but yeah. Um, yeah, also. And you're spot on, Jackie. You said it very well of, of like, it doesn't have to be 20%. It's whatever you're comfortable with, but that you, they should have some amount out of an outlay of cash to show that A, they're serious, B, that they actually can pay. Um, because we've had people where you do stuff and they just disappear. Like you do all the stuff, you give it to them. And then of course they might even take what you did and go find someone else to work on it for, you know, another 30 hours before they get paid and move it forward more. And the same thing. I mean, there's, there's just shifty people out there. So if they're willing to put a little bit of money out there first, it's a, it's, you know, it's a good, it don't have to be all of it, right? Like I don't mind after they pay a little bit, me taking on some of the, you know, I'll work when I haven't been paid after they paid some up front. It's just a good way to get that commitment. Uh, yeah, and then not because they need to cover everything or, right. or the first amount of time you use on it or anything like that. It's not because it needs to be a straight up uh, trade by per, per se. Um, and I've seen this stuff working all the way around, right? From the, the seller on one end or from the buyer on the other end or from a client or from a customer. If if there isn't some kind of value in ch exchange that has happened pretty close to, to the beginning of it, it the, the, the chance of it just fading out is big. Yeah, um, and, and the next one I would say is the, boy, if they're not responding to you in a timely manner, uh, it, it gets to be really hard, you know, and then those are the same people, ironically, that'll want things in a hurry, right? Like they they don't respond to you right away, and then it goes a couple of weeks, and then they're like, oh, can you have this to me tomorrow? You know, I mean, it's, it's really wild, but it's another kind of like a little thing of, man, look out for these people, because they're just not fun clients. <laughs> Uh, yeah, don't ex respond timely is just, I've had great clients or whatever you call them. No, great paying clients might be a way of putting it where I would be close to wasting my time or at least waiting an overly uh, long period of time to move on on a project because I couldn't get a response on uh, often small but very decisive things, right? It, it's like, um, do do we want the stuff to do this or that? And if you then need to wait three days to get a reply, or if you need to ping them back a few times to get a reply, then you're, yeah, it, it's not fun, right? And. <laughs> Um, it, this one goes into the next one, right? You've hated doing work for them in the past, right? If, 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 if you end up with someone who can respond timely or can't explain themselves or keep having unrealistic expectations, how much can I get for my money or what things can actually uh, be done within the budget or whatever it might be, just don't. If if you've already tried working with them and it wasn't a good expectation or a, a experience, maybe you should just say no to them. Often businesses don't really do it, but uh, you should probably fire half of your customers, right? Fire half of your customers that honestly take up you know 80, 85 percent of your time, 
and focus on the small group of people who actually are great customers and find more like those, right? It's a much better, everyone's happy. Well, I'm sorry, you're happy. And then you, you know, when you fire your clients, you can point them to someone else, right? But make them someone else's headache instead of yours. Because a bad client in the past is on average a bad client in the future. Like the, it's, it's very rare for that ever to change. Uh, so the, the next one also is like, when people are very fuzzy and they don't know what they want and it sounds crazy, but you know, they're vague. And, and sometimes I I'm vague about uh, usually how things are when I hire people to work for me, I don't often, if they're better programmers than me, I don't tell them how to do stuff. I tell them what I want it to do, but I don't tell them the how to do it. Cause that's why I'm hiring them. Right. So there's a big difference. It's not that they don't know what they want, like and how to do it. It's what it's actually supposed to do um, and have a clear picture that can again, lead to very, a bad experience yeah because if you then actually do do as you would ask them more questions about what is it that you wanted to do you at you should be able to work out something that becomes pretty specific in the end this and this and this is what i wanted to do but if they can't get there if they keep staying up there in the cloud of it uh, it needs to collect clients, but how? Should it collect emails? Should it collect phone numbers? Should it, what it, I'm just ballparking some ideas here, right? But oh. it's just like, if you, if you just stay up there, no, it doesn't need to specifically collect emails. Okay, so it should collect emails and phone numbers. Yeah, but business cards are also okay, or if they just want to write a note. No, we need to know what they want in the end, right? Oh, I want more sales. Yeah, yeah, who doesn't, right? But yeah. Uh, and the next one is they wanted a low price promising more work later, right? So, so they want you to give them a very low quote because you know uh -huh. what if this goes well right you'll have but loads of work for you later yeah right and sure it, it might work out a few times but more often than not they have this one thing that probably they didn't have real uh, well uh, expectations for they might not have known what they wanted or uh, so in the end they ended up feeling like they may have paid too much or even at that low price they didn't get what they wanted so they ended up not having more work for you after whatever it might have been right. you still ended up doing work at too low of a price so right. know your own worth right there, there's no reason to underbid yourself yeah I have one more I'm going to add in here as a soft one. And it's just because it dawned on me when you were saying this earlier is it's not a no, but when you are working with someone and they're not the decision maker because they have a group of people that have to decide, it doesn't mean you shouldn't take on the work. But boy, plan some extra budget for it because it's it sucks designing things by commission, like, you know, with a group of people. It's so much harder to get an actual answer and to get, you know, clarity of things. Yeah, it is as it is with everything else, right? People actually ending up agreeing on something. Right. <laughs> does does it look better in black or in the white uh, layout, right? <laughs> and maybe democracy will end up actually winning that one. Who knows? Because if you have a group of three, don't expect them to all agree always. Yeah. So I was going to um, say one more thing here, Jackie, and it, it dawned on me was none of, none of these are, are always say no in this situation, especially if you've previously done work with a client. You know, when you've done work with a client before and, and you have a really good relationship, you can be a little lesser on these things, right? Maybe it's a list like you look at, hey, but when there's a bunch of these things, that's when you want to be like, no, you know. <laughs> I'm going to pass on this or, or find someone else to direct them to. Yeah. I'd, I'd also say these nine times in some cases, you might need to have more of them be uh, the case 
and allow yep. that to be this thing that builds up to a no, right? Uh, someone who has very clear expectations and is willing to pay 20 up front um, and actually do reply promptly on your questions, but is in a big hurry. The, the big hurry part might not be the thing that actually makes you say no. Yeah, right, right. It's These are just general rules, but you're right. Um, they're not necessarily, you know, uh, independent of each other uh you know and, and you might say hey they've met some of these and you know the other one which is what i say is when i find someone that i think is going to be either a pain to work with or whatever i just throw on an extra 20 25 percent to my price right and just say well if i'm going to do it at least i'm going to get paid well you know and then i can put up with which usually it's really not that it's because i end up breaking even because they really did take more time <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and that, but again, that's a good skill, right? It's something that might come with experience. Okay, if uh, the fifth one we said, yeah, or if this one where their expectations are always kind of shady, um, taking you that little extra bit of payment for your work because you know it will be just a little bit extra work. Yeah you might have actually made a good deal there. And the thing is, it gets back to setting expectations. You can always offer them some of the money back at the end if it, if it didn't take longer. Hey, you know what? We got this done quicker than I thought. Here, you know, here's some money back. They'll love you, right? It's a great way to get dedicated clients. Absolutely. Yeah, if All you right. can actually do that, expected, uh, unexpected things like that, yeah. Awesome. All right, Jackie. Good seeing you. Absolutely. Bye, Bye Joe.